talk about it for just a little bit. I got about 45 minutes and I'm going to use every bit of it. Amen. We're talking about being saved and enslaved today. I'm going to wrap up next week. I said this week I'm going to, but I'm going to wrap up next week with poverty. And, uh, and I probably should have done it this week since we got the check, but I'm going to do it anyway. That's, I didn't know. Yeah, and so yeah. <laughs> I know we're going to get the check. But um, we're going to wrap up this, this, this part is going to be uh, being enslaved to religion. Religion. I was going to, religious people get on my nerves. Mm -hmm. They do. Uh, sometimes I'm talking about me. Sometimes I get on my own nerves. Yeah. Have you ever noticed, have you ever found yourself looking down your nose at somebody because they're not as holy as you? Yeah. Can I just tell the truth? Is it okay if I just tell the truth on a Wednesday night before it's more thunderstorms. Okay. Can I just tell the truth? But sometimes we start feeling like we're how much better we are. And if everybody's just a Christian like me, how much better everything would be? Come on, help me a minute. Have you ever just thought about that? I mean, you ever, did you ever catch yourself going, man, I'm a jerk. Every yeah. day. I catch myself doing that sometimes, man. Because, you know, okay, can I just help you? Uh, I grew up in the old church when Nobody had tattoos. And everybody that has one is going to hell. Unless you're in the world in World War II, then you get out. But but yeah. serious. That's, and, 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 that, and and I'm not saying I'm gonna run out and get a tattoo because I'm not. Uh, it's not my deal. Okay? But everybody Oh did you see they had a tattoo? And I don't I'm not condoning I'm not saying go right out get one, okay? But I go across. That's great. I don't care. Okay, I'm, I'm not. But I remember growing up and, and nobody had them. And everybody that had them made everybody all uneasy. Well, you're not supposed to just help me today. Because I'm just going to talk about the truth today. Okay? That's right. It's, <laughs> no, no heckling from the ground. Okay, so. Um, and so, I also grew up with this, that. If anybody had long hair, they were a guy. <gasps> hell. Hell. Going to hell. Any lady cut her hair? Jesus. Help her, God. She was going to hell. Slacks were a big one. Any woman that would walk in church and not have a dress on was going to hell. That's how I, that was the mentality that I grew up with. Not all the time. And I, and please understand me. I don't, want, I don't want to belittle how I grew up because I grew up very good. I, I, I got a good, solid foundation of the Word of God. I got a good, solid foundation of who God is. I did. But there was just some things that we thought were important that really aren't that important. Amen. That just didn't really matter in human beings. Now, my wife, you will never catch my wife coming to church without, uh, without a dress. That's just her thing. She's not going to condemn you because she won't she say, like, you know what, did you see how I had jeans on? She will never do that. Most of the time she's like, oh, I didn't know what she had on. You know, she doesn't, she doesn't notice. And I don't notice. As long as you're covered, I'm happy. Amen? I don't need to see all that. I, I'm happy. If you're covered, I'm happy. Okay? And so, but that's how we kind of grew up. And sometimes I catch myself going back into that, going... Did you see what she had on? You know, did you see he had a tattoo? Did you see he had an earring? Did you see his hair was long? And so, not that I do that, but I say sometimes I fall back into that. I, I almost feel myself being caught back up into that religious nonsense. I, I instead of instead of being about Jesus, I'm about the rules, the unwritten rules. There's unwritten rules of baseball. How many know the unwritten rules of baseball? Here's one. If you hit a batter, you can bet the first guy up on the next inning is going to get drilled. Unwritten rule of baseball. If you hit a home run and you stare at the pitcher, guaranteed, next time you're up, you're going to get drilled. Unwritten rule of baseball. You don't show up the pitcher. Are y'all with me? You just don't, man. You don't show him up because you're gonna because he's got the ball and he's gonna throw it about 98 at your head. So don't do that. And so it's an unwritten rule in baseball. You don't show up the pitcher and you don't you don't hit the ball and fling the bat. Yeah. 
and make a big production. If you hit a home run, you hit a home run, you can celebrate when you get to the dugout. But you don't show them up. Unwritten rules of baseball. They're not in there. They're not in the rule book. You'll never find them, but I promise you it'll happen. Watch a major league baseball game. And you let some, somebody do it, and I guarantee the first guy up is going to get drilled. Retaliation. And it's just how it is. They work it out on the field. It's always been that way. It's going to be that way until baseball is outlawed because the ball's too hard or whatever we do now. We're so, we're so sissified now. Okay. They're throwing that hard ball at people. Okay, anyway. And so, it's the truth. Well, I don't want them to really have to run. So, okay, get it in the outfield. It's just a signal. You guys can walk. I mean, it's, I don't, it's just crazy. Okay, anyway. Same with this like Religion. Religion are rules that are more important than relationship. That's what religion is. Religion is a bunch of rules. Don't do this, don't do that, don't do this. And please don't turn me off until I get through it because I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm going somewhere. Don't shut me off and say, I don't agree with that until we get to the, to the end. And if you don't agree with me, then we can talk about it, okay? The rules are, are more important than relationships. What you do is more important than what you have. Okay? That's, that's religion. What religion does is makes you stay inside your little Christian circle and never venture out into the evil world. That's why you'll see so many people that they'll, they'll come to church and they'll testify about how great God is in church, but they'll never testify to their neighbor about how great God is. Yes. Because it's easier in church to testify about a God that everybody agrees with you than go out into the world and testify about what Jesus has done for your life. It's easier. And so religion keeps you inside the little church circle. It makes you withdraw from the world. That's what religion does. It keeps you it keeps you an introvert. It, it's almost an incestuous thing to where it's just about us and our little group. And, and if we can just keep it in, in our little group and I'll be happy about it. And, and man, we're all going to go to heaven because when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Right? But what about <clears throat> taking somebody along with us? Amen. We keep ourselves pure by not, contamin not being in that contaminated world. That's what religion does. Religion is a bunch of rules. And I'll tell you why we have the rules. And the law is a great thing. And I'll tell you why it's a great thing here in a minute. But I don't live by the law anymore. I'm not under the law. Does that mean I have to do away with the law? No, because Jesus said I didn't do away with it. He said I came to fulfill it. Okay. I'm free. We always sing that song. I, I am free to run. I am free to dance. I'm free to whatever skip. Okay. But are you truly free? I, I, I look at Christians' faces sometimes, and they're the most miserable looking faces I've ever seen in my life. They they are always burdened down with something. They always have a trouble. They're always having trouble with someone. They're always con they're, they're constantly having uh, something come against them. They're always it seems like they seems like they're always having trouble. They are so depressing. And why would you want to be a Christian if that is the testimony that the world sees? Why would you want something that makes you so miserable that you can't even live a life of joy and happiness when you can have joy and happiness and not be a Christian? It's true. Why would you want to do that? Because they're so bound by the rules and regulations of everything. Like if I if I cut my hair, then I'm going to hell. If I if I don't cut my hair, I'm going to hell. If I don't have long sleeves, I'm going to hell. If I have short sleeves, I'm going to hell. If I if I don't wear pants all the time, then I'm going to hell. If I do wear pants, I'm going to hell. Yeah. What do you what's what's the point? Yeah. If I hit a ball like this, I'm okay, but if I hit one like that, I'm going to hell. I don't understand. I don't understand. I can't, I, I can walk, but I can't roller skate. I, I don't get that. I can watch TV, but I can't go to the movies. I don't understand that. I can bring a DVD into my house that has the same cussing, the same everything, but since I didn't go to the movies, it's okay. Yeah. That is stupid. Can I just help you? That's stupid. And I understand the philosophy. The, the philosophy is it's not the, the act, it's the place you go to do the act. I understand. I grew up in it. I understand. Because this was always seen as a bar issue 
This was seen as a group out there, out there in the softball field this year. I get that. I understand that. I, I get that if I go to the movies, nobody knows what the movie, that's what, I, that's what I heard when I was growing up. Nobody knows what movie you're going to go watch. Okay. They don't know what I'm watching on TV either. I just, I'm, I've just always been a smart aleck, I guess. I don't mean to be, but it, I just doesn't, it just doesn't connect with me. I, it just doesn't, they don't know what movie I'm bringing to my house. But you're, you're going to ruin your testimony by going to the movies. I hope not. Hopefully my testimony is greater than a movie. Amen. Hopefully my lifestyle is greater than that. Yeah. Hopefully than what, I've, what I've lived and hopefully what I do in my life is greater than somebody saw me go into the tw the, this twin cinema at Strawler's and see a one of two movies. You know, it's not like I have a Metroplex movie theater here. I'm going to one of two. I, I can go right or left. You know, it's not like I can, and so it's, I, just, I never did understand that. So I, I'm free, but are you truly free? Whoa. Are you truly free? Are, you, are, we, are, are we enslaved by religion? I think some, sometimes we are. I, I, I know sometimes I am. I know sometimes my thought process gets short-circuited because I'm so ingrained in the Pentecostal movement. Now, I like to talk about Spiritualism because that's all I've ever been. So please don't be offended at me. That's all, that's all I know about. I've never been anything else but a Pentecostal Church of God kid. That's all I know. And so I, I know that sometimes our, our, thought process, our thought processes sometimes get mixed up because we, we equate dress with Christianity. And I know God did this to me on purpose one time, and I think I've shared this here before. But I, I think, I know God did this to me on purpose when I was at Six Flags. And Six Flags is not my thing. I don't like Six Flags. I'm sorry. It's 127 degrees. You stand in line for an hour to ride a 30 second ride. It's not my thing. And I got, especially when I had little kids that were crying. And I want to ask me, I want to this. I want to, shut up. Okay. And so, I know y'all never did that, but I did. Okay. But I know God did this to me on purpose at Six Flags one year. In front of me was the Pentecostal Holiness people. It's 127 degrees. Your feet are sticking to the asphalt. That's to me is short weather. Yeah. 67 degrees is short weather for me. Okay. Yeah. And so it's just ridiculous. And so in front of me, waiting in line, the Pentecostal Holiness couple. How do you know the Pentecostal Holiness? I'll tell you how I do. Dude had a white shirt, black pants, and white black shoes, and had a his collar. Buttoned all the way up, long sleeves. She had jean skirt, tennis shoes, and a long shirt on. Not criticizing, just know that's what they were wearing. Okay? I turned around and looked, and there's a Muslim couple behind me. Full Muslim garb. Black, covered head to toe. Boom. And God spoke to my Lord and said, What's the difference? <laughs> Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Holiness. They're whatever righteousness, whatever they are, whatever they call it. Holiness. It's a set of rules, man. It's a set of rules. Now hang on with me. Don't get too mad at me yet, okay? Okay. There's a reason for the law, Romans 7 and 7. Romans 7 and 7. I've never forgotten, that's been 25 years ago. That spoke to me, what's the difference? There's no difference. 7 7, ready? What shall we say then? Is the, is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, had I not, I'm sorry, nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law said, Thou shalt not covet. So what, is, what does that mean? This is what it means. Is the law bad? Or does that mean it's not from God? No. The law is not bad. What does the law do? The law is an MRI. It shows you. It shows you inside what it reveals sin. The law reveals sin. 
It reveals it. It doesn't heal it. Amen. You with me? Amen. All it does is reveal. It doesn't heal. The law just shows you there's something inside of you that you need to deal with. Yeah. What are you talking about, Brother Jeff? The law is this. Thou shalt not covet. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not whatever. Whatever the shalt not is. It gives you an MRI in your life to see what's going on in your life. It lets you see on the inside of you what to do and what's inside of you. That's what the law does. It is an x-ray or an MRI or however you want to put it. It shows you internally what's going on in your life. So the law is not bad. The law is not horrible. The law is not a, a, a thing that's got, that is not from God. It is sent from God to simply show you what's going on inside of your life. It, but the problem is, if you can't live under the law and be healed of what's going on in your life, it just reveals to you what needs to be healed in you. Yeah. That makes sense? Yeah. Are y'all with me? Yeah. All right, I just want to make sure. It brings sin to light. The law was not done away with. It was just fulfilled. Yeah. What does that mean, Brother Jeff? That, that's a lot of Christianese. I know. But the law is not, it was not taken away. Johnny Law didn't leave. Yeah. It was just fulfilled. It was just made whole. It's just made to where it now works in your life because it shows you exactly what's going on in your life. It brings sin to life. The law reveals sin. Amen. And you have to deal with sin on God's basis, which is the blood of Jesus Christ, which not only reveals, but it heals the sin. Are you with me? Okay, come on with me. Okay, listen. The law makes a point. Let's say, for example, there's a gay pride parade and a bunch of Christians get mad and go, hey, hold up signs and say, we're against you. Okay? We're making a point. But nobody in that great gay pride parade is going to walk up and say, you know, you're right. I need to get saved. Mm, right. They're not going to do it. I hope they do, but they're, not, they're probably not. I can't say they're not because I don't know. But whatever. But you're holding up that sign, you're making a point. We were never told to make a point. Right. We were told to make a difference. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. Yeah. Let God make the point yeah. with the law and let us be the difference makers by telling them about Jesus. Because Jesus didn't come to make a point, He came to make a difference. Amen. And He changed the world by His sayings and what He did and His life that He led. He changed the world by not condemning sinners, but condemning sin. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. Okay. Listen, the law makes a point. Sometimes the law is needed to make a point. Sometimes I preach things to make a point. And sometimes I preach things and say, this is what God says. But that doesn't mean, that's just to sort of reveal it in your life. That doesn't mean that because I made that point, it's going to be healed in your life. You have to go to Jesus and the cross of Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ, is what heals that point I made. Are you with me? Okay. Listen, Christians are not here to make a point. We're here to make a difference. I already said that. Listen, Jesus came to be a difference maker. Yes, he did. Religion doesn't make differences. It just makes you bound. Yeah. I'm not saying we shouldn't have standards. We should have standards. That's right. We should be the light of the world. We should be the salt of the earth. We should live for God the best we know how. I'm just telling you right now, but I'm not going to get on to you if you go roller skating and bowling. I'm not going to. I promise you. I don't think that's going to send you to hell. Amen. I just don't. And if I'm wrong, I, I hope I'm not. <laughs> but there's no, there's no scripture in the Bible that thou shalt not have wheels on your feet. I just, I just don't. Thou shalt not have a blade on your feet. I, I, don't, I just, I don't see it. I don't see that you. Thou shalt not throw a sixteen-pound ball. I don't, I don't see that. I understand that we're not supposed to be friends and be in the world. I get it. We're not supposed to have our hands and, and we're not supposed to be diving headlong into the world and being like the world. I get that. We're supposed to separate ourselves and make a difference in our life. I understand that. But I want you to understand this, that God sees that, that you are supposed to be different, but he also sends you into the world right. to make a difference. Right. He didn't, he didn't, 
Listen, he didn't call the disciples and say, now y'all stay right by me and don't let that world contaminate you. Mm -hmm. So what he did, is it? No. He sent them two by two into the world. He said, go heal the sick. Go, make, go, go heal the lame. Go cast out devils. Go get some folks saved and baptize them. Let's go. He said, get out there and get them. He said, sick them. Get out there. Don't even take a coat. Don't even take a purse. Don't take it. Just go. Go do what you need to do. Don't worry about it. I got you covered. And so, church, let me just share something with you real fast. And, and I'm running out of time really quickly, but that's okay. I'm going to preach as long as I can because I know we have, uh, I'm going to say it's really bad because we have time limits because we have to get kids out. But um, hang on with me just a minute. Jesus came to make a difference. Jesus did not condemn sinners. John 3.17, please. If you can quote John 3.16, you need to know John 3.17. John 3.16 is great, but John 3.17 tells you what Jesus came for. For God sent not a son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. If Jesus didn't condemn the world, then who do we think we are to do it? Right. Help me a minute. Right. Oh, I love it. Thank you, Jesus. He said, is that? They already know. Oh. The next verse, yeah. Hear me, church, please. Go ahead and throw 18 up there, please. Before me. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't believe that I'm having to come, but he didn't believe that I was condemned already because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. They already know, man. Listen, when I was lost, when I was in sin, didn't nobody have to tell me. Right. Nobody tell they didn't have to tell me I was lost. I knew I was lost. I, Anyway, it doesn't matter. Okay, I'm going on. I'm going on here. Jesus didn't condemn sinners. Go 17. He didn't condemn sinners. He condemned sin. It wasn't about the person sinning. It was about the sin in the person. Jesus loved that person. He loved that spirit. He loved that soul. He loved that person. That He loved them and, and, he, and he did not condemn them. Remember the lady who was caught in an act of adultery? Woman, where are thy accusers? There are none here. Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Amen. Come on, man. Amen. I'm going to give you a story about a cave. If you are a lost person, you get lost in a cave. You don't know where you're at. You don't know what direction to go. It's dark. Your light has gone out. And you got separated from your group. And you're lost and you don't know which way to get out. Do you need somebody coming up to you and saying, What's wrong with you? You're lost. Exactly. Oh. They already know they're lost. They already know that they can't find their way out. They've been bumping their head on the side of the walls. They've been tripping over, over, over stones. They've been hitting their heads on stalactites and and tripping over stalagmites, and they've been doing all that. They don't know what to do. They don't know where to go. And the last thing they need is some knucklehead run up to them and say, what's wrong with you? How did you get lost? Yeah, true. Or do they need somebody that has a flashlight mm -hmm. yeah. and a way out? Yeah, yeah. They need somebody that has the light and knows the way out. They need somebody that will take them by the hand and show them and keep them from danger and show them, hey, don't trip over that. And hey, we're going to do that. We have two, we're gonna two left. It's going to get real tight. You got to squeeze through it. Okay? It's going to get real tight. We're getting real tight. But the, the exit is right around the corner. And when they turn around the corner, they see the light of the exit. And then you don't have to help them anymore because they're walking by themselves now. So that's what they need. Someone is lost in a cave and you don't need to go tell them they're lost. They already know. They need a light in the way out. Matthew 419. Matthew 419. Dean, who's the guy? Uh, he gave me one CD of his uh, shell. Um, he, I listened to some stuff the other day, and he has a good, he just I'll talk to you later about it. It's good about the loss. I, just, I don't know, you probably you probably have heard it and listened to it, but it's really, really good. And uh, 
I'll talk to you later about it. I don't know. I just came to my mind. And so it went. Matthew 4 19 says this. And he says unto him, Follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. How many want to follow Jesus? Yeah. Yeah. Do you? Yes. Yeah. I'll raise my hand higher. Let's see. Okay. Like, like, <laughs> religion. <laughs> um, but I want to be a follower of Jesus. But to be a follower of Jesus, he said, come follow me and he'll do what? So how can we say we are followers of Jesus if we never catch any fish? Mm -hmm. I'm not here to condemn you. That's, see, that's one of those things the law brings light to what? Anyway, because Jesus said, come follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. It's true. If I'm not catching any fish, I'm not doing something right. Right. He wants, me to make, he wants me to make a fisher of men and women. To truly, follow, to truly fish, we have to go get some place where there's fish. When Billy Hawk and Jason, uh, uh, Billy Hawk and Jason and I, we, we did a thing called Pray Per Se, which was prepared to reach another youth and that was in the early 90s, and we all had our stupid haircuts and our mustaches, and it was a little stupid. But anyway. Um, anyway, we called it Pray Per Se, which is prepared to reach another youth, and we would go around and preach and do good stuff, and uh, that's what we did. And uh, we, were doing, we were doing one here, and I went and put a flyer in the liquor store. And uh, I asked, I asked, uh, Mrs. White. I know Mrs. White. She's a nice lady. She's at the liquor store. I don't know if she still owns it or not, but she used to. And, uh, and uh, I said, Mrs. White, is it okay if I hang this on the door? She said, Jeff, what is it? And I said, I said, it's a flyer. We're having a, a crusade at our church. And I said, I just want to fish where there's, where there's fish. She said, baby, you can put whatever you want to. Do. And so she's just a super nice lady. She just owns a liquor store. You know? And I, and I always I bring that up is because sometimes we forget to go fish with those fish. Yeah. What good does it do to put a flyer in another church? That's right. What good does it do to to do that? I, I don't I don't get it. And, and and to go stay in our little groups and and encourage each other about how good we are. And, and I want that. And you need that. You need to be encouraged. I'm not saying that we're all being encouraged. And how good I am, and we don't—I don't need that. I, I, but I'm saying, sometimes we we forget what our purpose is. Yeah. Our purpose is to catch fish. Yeah. We're fishers of men and women. And so if we don't go f fish where there's fish, then we get frustrated because we're not catching any fish. Yeah. Isn't it fun to go fishing when you're not catching anything? <laughs> it's a waste of your day. You can look at it that way, or you can look at it like, no one called me. Amen. I'm out in the sun. I'm having fun. I don't care if I drown 27 worms. I, I don't care. I, it doesn't matter to me. I, hey, if I ever get to go fishing, it is a joyous day. I don't care if you catch anything. Amen. I Amen. like to go fishing. Amen. Yeah, God. Amen. But we're taking up an offering for Dean just for that statement right there. Amen. Worst day fishing is better than the best day working. I promise you that's the truth. Listen, but truly fish, we have to go fish where there's fish. But to go get the big ones, you have to have a boat. Nobody's standing on the side of the ocean going, <laughs> not to catch the big ones. They're taking a charter boat out in the middle of the ocean, and they're trying to catch jaws, okay? They're out there trying to catch the big one, right? So we have to have a boat. And at the dock, you can have a boat and you can have it at the dock and you can have a park. But what do you do at the dock? There. You get in the boat, there. you get gas, you get food, you get the poles, you get the bait, you get all that stuff. But you don't really fish at the dock. Now, if you're a little kid, you do. A little Snoopy pole. You're trying to catch perch that are hanging out down there eating. Okay? But, but we, as fisher guys, don't really fish at the dock. That's we're fishing off of it. But when we have a boat, we like to go out on the boat. Because at the dock, 
We get refueled and we get bait. The church is sometimes, I'm just going to throw this out there. The church is the boat and sometimes the church building is the dock. So we're supposed to get refueled and get bait. And so that's what we're supposed to do. And so we have to get our boats wet to go do what God said do. We have to get our boats wet. We have to get in the water. We have to be able to say, you know what I'm going to do? Jesus, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go out into the deep where I can't swim anymore, where, I'm not, where I can't touch anymore, and I'm just going to swim just in case. If something happens to the boat, I'm going to have to swim because I can't touch bottom. And so I'm going to have to take my boat out as far as I can need to take it. And some of us have this little one of fish finder thingy, whatever. What's it called? That's what it's called. Okay. All right. And you have to dial it. Okay. So get it, and you find the fish. And make sure it's not. And make sure it's not a re, uh, drop off. Whatever. Okay. And so you do all that, and you and but you go fish where there's fish. You gotta find them, and you don't use. The same bait for the same fish. Yeah. King salmon fishing, we went a few years ago in Alaska. You don't even use bait. You use a red stopper thing with a hook on it. And you throw it because all they're trying to do is get stuff out of their way. And you throw it and they put it in their mouth and you go, see, there's not any bait on it. There's nothing on it but a hook and a red bobber thing. And then it's a 50 pound fish with teeth. Yeah. And you go, fish all! And everybody cussing because they're, you know, they're having to roll, roll their, their, their poles in. And then you have to pay a kid five bucks and knock it in the head and drag it on, on the shore because you can't hold it up and go, because it'll bite your hand. Okay? And so you drag it on the shore, shore and then some little kid says, do, 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 bam, 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 and hits it in the head until it's dead. And you give them five bucks. <laughs> That's the truth. Am I lying? Janet? I didn't pay five bucks. <laughs> yeah, Janet's a cheap step. Janet said, thank you. But I, I, some of the kids are trying to make money. And Janet's like, get out of here for me, kid. But anyway, and so we paid five bucks for some kid to walk up and beat, beat the snot up a fish for us. But we didn't use anything, no bait on the hook, just the hook. If you do that to go bass fishing, you'll be there all day. Yeah. Yeah. You might get lucky and hook one, <laughs> yeah. but you're not going to get a bite. I, you know, I used to go catfishing. I don't like to really eat dirty catfish, but I like to catch catfish. And so I just always throw them back. But I just, and so I just, the fun's in the catching, not the cleaning. And so the, and as long as you don't, as long as they don't swallow the hook, and if they swallow it, then I'll throw it back for them to die. But. Um, I used chicken liver to catch catfish. But you're not going to catch a lot of bass on, on chicken liver. No. No. Bass like shiny things. Yeah. They're going through the water. And I always envied my brother because he got to go like this all the time. We had to sit there and go. When I was a little kid, you know how, how hard it is as a little kid to go catfishing? Yeah. Uh, get to watch the line. And my aunt had a bell on hers. So if she got a body, it goes, <laughs> I'm just sharing for my life. Okay. And we'd go to Little River. We'd go to Little River and go catfishing on Little River. Anybody ever been catfishing on Little River? You don't know what you're missing. All right, so anyway. So we would do that. The point of that is this. The whole point of that is this. have to have different bait for different fish. Yeah. But the problem is sometimes we try to use the same bait with every fish. Because yeah. if they don't fit in this little category, they can go to hell as far as we're concerned because we're not going to go try any other different kind of bait. Good job, brother. Good job. We're not going to try a little shiny thing. Well, actually, it's entertaining. And yeah, it's entertaining, but it's catching them. Yeah. Well, that's boring to sit there with a... Well, of course it's boring. Until you start fighting a the fish, then it's not boring anymore. Well, you're throwing out a stopper thing with a hook. What are you going to catch? I'm fixing to catch a 50 pound salmon fish. I'm fixing to fight. What I'm fixing to do. And so, once you get that bad boy on there and you, you're trying to get it in, it's fun. But the 
problem is sometimes we're not going to let, that, we're not going to get out of our little religious box. Because that's not the way we did it. Can I share with you that Victory in Jesus was one of the new songs at some point? Yeah. Well, if we're not, bring, we're not singing Bringing in the Sheaves, I'm not going to that church. They sang that Victory in Jesus song. Somebody got mad about it, I promise you. I can promise you somebody got mad about Victory in Jesus or uh, Hold the Fort or something. Because that was, that was a new song, one of, one of the charismatic songs. I promise you. We have to get our boats wet. I know you guys are getting bored, sorry. Religious people don't want to get their boat wet. And they don't want to get it dirty. It's easier to stay at the dock and have a nice clean boat. And not have those troublesome fish in our boat. Because it doesn't smell right and my boat's all waxed up and the inside of it's nice and pretty. And if I take it out in the water, it's going to get water in it and it's going to get the fish smell in it. It's going to get bait on it and the seats are going to get worn. Yeah. And it's easier to see, look at our nice pretty boat at the dock with no fish in it. Because we're not out fishing. We're just out there at the dock with a nice pretty boat. And there's nothing, listen, listen, there's nothing happening in the boat because don't touch that, don't mess with that, leave that alone, you're gonna break that. Don't mess with that seat, don't touch that, don't lift that lid up, it's gonna break, don't do that. And so that's what religion does, it says don't touch that, don't do that, don't lift that, don't bother that, don't you're gonna mess that up. Yeah. And Jesus just said, go out there and please catch some fish. Go out there and throw your nets on the other side. I know you've tried it this way forever and you haven't caught anything, but throw your nets on the other side and then you have to call everybody else to help you get the fish. Because listen, listen, religion will always keep you at the dock right, and never let you go out into the water. And you'll never, you'll never do what God has called you to do. You'll sit at the, don't, let, don't get to the religion mindset. Don't get enslaved to religion to where look how good I am. Look how nice my boat is and it's all shiny. Well, hallelujah. The orca's coming in. It's got smoke coming out of it. It looks like it hadn't been painted in 45 years. It's got stuff hanging all over it, but it's full of fish. What do you think God's more pleased with? Amen. A boat is, it sounds like a steam engine coming in. The orca, Jaws. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, all right, okay, just look, okay. Gotcha. <laughs> what do you think Jesus is more pleased with? Your nice, shiny, pretty bow? No. Folks, can I, just, can I just tell you something? And I mean this from the bottom of my heart. I don't want to move out there if it's going to be too nice and too shiny that we're going to mess it up by having dirty sinners in it. If we're not going to have people in it that God has called it for us to go reach, then let's not do it. Let's just stay right here. Amen. I want it full of people who never knew that Jesus Christ loved them. Amen. And if they did know, they forgot. Yeah. They forgot where they were coming. They just forgot. They got lost in the cave. And someone didn't go and scream in their face, how stupid are you? You got lost. Instead, they grabbed them by the hand and said, let me show you how to get out of here. Let's go. Let's get out. Amen. That's what I want from that, from that building. I don't care. I don't want to have a nice pretty boat at the dock, not full of fish. I'm going to be disappointed. I really am. I'm almost done. Jesus met unbelievers where they were at. Where they were at. He didn't, he didn't drag them into the temple and say, okay, you can bow down to me, get saved. No. He went to the well where the woman was at the well and had been married six times. And he told her everything about her life. He went to a tree where Zacchaeus was up in a tree. He went to a tomb where a man was possessed of the devil. Was cutting himself. He couldn't, he couldn't get any relief. He was bound with fetters and chains that couldn't hold him. He found him where he was at. He found people where they were at. He met a woman who had been caught in the very act of adultery. 
And I'm pretty, pretty, pretty confident she wasn't really well dressed because they caught her in the very act of adultery. So I'm sure she was embarrassed of her clothing. He met a woman that had been sick for 13 years on the way to heal the child who was 13 years old. And the child was 13 years old, died because he's not only a healing, but he's a resurrection. Amen. Can, you, can you just help him? He, he found some fishermen. Where did he find them at? The synagogue? No. Fishing. Cleaning their nets. He didn't find them. Well, if they want to come to church, they know where the church is at. How arrogant is that? Amen. How arrogant is that? That's arrogance. Yeah. They know where the church is at. Well, you know where the bar is at. I hope you're not going all the way home. I hope, you're not, I hope you're not parking at Walmart in the automotive so you can walk across the three okay, I'm hoping. I'm hoping. I hope it gets home. There's 132 contacts with people that Jesus had. 132 in the New Testament. I may be off a little bit, but 132 is the best I can find. Six people he met in the temple. Four, four people he met in the synagogue. 122 about the world. Amen. Amen. Just had a life. 122 people he met, recorded, that he met. He met while they were just living life. They weren't having church. They weren't in the temple. They weren't in the synagogue. They were in the world. Didn't have Facebook. They weren't have friends. They didn't have Twitter. They didn't have Instagram. And none of that stuff. This is what happened. Hear me. Jesus met them where they were at. He went to where the fish were at. He went to where the people were at. He wasn't afraid of people. So, Brother Jeff, are you telling me that I need to go to the bar because where the fish at? Didn't say that. Didn't say that. What I'm telling you is this. It's just be available in the world. Don't be so, what was it saying? Don't be so heavenly minded, you know, earthly good. Spiritually minded, you know, earthly good. Let God use you wherever you're at. Amen. Let God use you. And don't be such a religious person that you can't talk to some dirty sin. That's right. Have you, did you hear the word he used? Yeah, you said it 10 years ago. Get over yourself. Did you see what he did you see what she was wearing? Yeah, you were worse than that 10 years ago. Get over yourself. There's some people you go, man, you should have worn it when you could have worn it. But that's a, <laughs> there's some people, you know, you should have worn it when you could have. But, but it's just, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. You know it's true. Y'all been to walk over. Okay. So, so, here, <laughs> listen though. Serious. We need to get over ourselves and our little, little religious mindset. When the rules become greater than the relationship, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. Are there rules? Yes, there's rules. Yes, there's things we have to do. Yes, there's a standard we have to keep. Yes, there is. But I'm promising you right now, not everybody in this place got saved and automatically just fell right in line. Oh, I'm fixed! <laughs> Sanctification is a work in progress. Yeah. It is not an instantaneous thing. You find yourself daily. Yeah. The law will come and x-ray you in a second. Yeah. And you'll go, I didn't realize that was in me. Yeah, everybody else knew. Yeah. <laughs> everybody else knew. I don't know how you didn't know. And so, sanctification comes as a, as a work in progress, man. It's not instantaneous. Let's remember sometimes where we came from. Don't you ever, ever forget where God brought you from. Because when you forget where you came from, you'll forget who you are. Yeah. It's true. Yeah, you got, yeah, you got a nice suit and tie now. Yeah. But I knew you when you had a mullet that was that was half bleached blonde. You had things cut in your eyebrows. 
had like little notches cut in your eyebrows, and you looked horrible for that evening three days. You did nothing but drink for three days. I, I, I know none of y'all know anybody like that, but I'm just saying. Y'all all saved and all good for God for all your life. Listen, I know. I get it. I'm going sinner. I get it. But listen. Hear me. You can be free of a lot of things and bound to that mess, and you'll never win a soul to Jesus Christ. Definitely. Because nobody, nobody, nobody wants to hear how stupid they are for being lost. When they know they're lost. They just want a way out. Help me. I'm starving to death. I'm hungry. I'm dying of thirst. I know I need help. I need, I need a way out of here. Please help me. Well, first, let me criticize you for your dress. And let me criticize you for your haircut. Let me criticize you for... Uh, not being smart enough not to get lost. Let me criticize you for not being as holy as I am. Let me criticize you for all these other reasons. And then if you're still around, we might help you get out. <coughs> Come. No. Take him by the hand. Be the light. Be the salt. And say, this is how you get out. You know I'm telling you. If we ever get that, ever get that. You know what? You know what's going to excite me? You know what's really going to excite me? And here's my I may never stop running if this happens. If this happens. When I see people that are delivered from alcohol addiction, drug addiction, porn addiction, yes. prostitution, yes. and they are door greeters, and they are ushers, and they are, and they are trying to learn how to live for God, and they're just barely yes. saved, and we're just keeping them out, and we're, just, we're keeping them hanging in there, man, and we're Amen. working with them. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> You ain't gonna see nothing but tears from that. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to get the Southern to come here. I'm not trying to get the Baptists to come here. I'm not trying to get anybody else that's going to a church. And I'm not trying to get them. I'm trying to get that one that's sitting today. Yes, amen. Without hope. Yes. They haven't eaten in four days because they're they've been shooting up drugs. Their marriage is in shambles. Their kids have got taken away. Their DHS custody. Their teeth are rotted out of their head. <coughs> Can, you, Can you just imagine when the church gets a heart for that? Yes, amen. And not a heart for whatever we have a heart for sometimes. No. Of our rules and our regulations, and please don't misunderstand me. There has to be standard, yes. especially when you go into a leadership position. There has to be standard. When you step on the stage, there has to be standard. You know what the standard is to sit here? You're alive and you're breathing. Amen. And you want something from God? That's the yes. standard. Amen. You're alive and breathing, and God's dealing with your heart. Because it's God's, he's, he's reaching, he's reaching out. Can you imagine a church like that? that you know, people will talk about us. People will criticize us. They'll do all that stuff. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're reaching the lost and the dying and the damned of humanity. And, they, and they're getting their lives turned around. Yeah. The religious people will criticize us. Yes. The Jesus will thank us. Amen. Because he's called us to be fishers of men. Fishers of men. Fishers of men. Yes. Not cleaners of fish. Mm -hmm. Amen. Fishers of men. Catch them. Put the hook in good. If you catch them and you get the hook in good, or you catch them in a net and there's no escape, what they do, then let Jesus deal with them. I've said it a million times. It's my job to put Jesus in your face, and then you have to deal with it. It's my job to put Jesus in your face, you don't have to deal with it. One more. This could be enslavement of poverty. We're going to break some poverty out some people next week. Amen. Give the Lord a hand of praise. I appreciate it.